Welcome everybody on this uh, latest uh, Joe Dell webinar, this one in collaboration with Jean Lee. This is part two um, of the webinar um, from the one that we had back in December of last year, which on YouTube has had over 2,700 views. Um, and I'm sure there'll be one or two more um, following uh, this uh, session today. So this is part two. The idea of this one, as opposed to the first one, was um, uh, to move us on to the next step. So we had more like an introduction to Jean Lee, to escape rooms and so on and so forth from uh, Marie. Today, we are very kindly uh, joined by Julia Morris as well, in, in, uh, in addition to uh, Marie, which is absolutely fantastic. So you, you've got a two for one deal, superb. And you really are, you know, you really are being treated to royalty in Jean Lee, I would say. And I don't say that lightly. Um, I think that, uh, both Marie and Julia are really, really you know, at the top of their game in relation to the use of Gene Lee. So, and I know so many people on Twitter have been saying how much they've been looking forward to this. So this is really fantastic that we've all come together. We're going to run for about an hour and a half. Um, we'll do the questions um, more or less um, at the end. Although if there are natural pauses, we will do them. And then during the session, to just, I haven't said the date yet. Today is the 14th of April, 2021. Uh, and it's absolutely brilliant to be here. So, the idea of, the, of this session is to take us to the next level with Jean Lee. We're going to start off with uh, Conchi from Jean Lee, who's very kindly agreed to come along and talk a little bit about the educational aims of, of Jean Lee and what um, Jean Lee's principles um, are all about, which is uh, lovely. Um, I will then introduce Marie, who will then give us some uh, lots of fantastic um, ideas and uh, suggestions on how to uh, take Jean Lee to the next level. That will be followed by the lovely Julia Morris as well. And then we'll wrap up with some questions at the end. So without further ado, I would love to welcome Conchi. Um, over to you, Conchi. And thank you ever so much. Conchi was talked for about 10 minutes now around Jean Lee and the sort of the, the bigger picture. Over to you, Conchi. Thank you so much, Joe. It's an honor to be here with you today. Um, you know, it's really lovely to meet everybody and to see people connecting from all over the world. Uh, we're really excited to see that. So thank you, everyone. Um, what I'm going to do is to give you um, an overview on Genially. I guess there, there's going to be people who are not so familiar with the tool, maybe. So the idea is to take a little step back and give you an overview of everything you can create with Genially. And then, you know, Julia and, and Marie, they're going to, you know, dive more into gamification and other areas of the tool. So I'm going to get started with this. So as you can see on the screen, um, I'm going to start with what Genially is. And Genially is a content creation tool that teachers, educators, instructional designers, and students are using to create interactive learning materials for the classroom. And I'm going to show you the difference the, about you know, the type of materials you can create with Genially and the type of materials we're used to. So on the left side of the screen, you can see like the traditional uh, type of materials or lessons that we're used to, that they're basically showing like a, you know, a, a chunk of text, a flat image, and maybe a link to YouTube here that would take me outside the lesson or the learning experience. And on the right side of the screen, you have exactly the same information that you have in the left, but created with Genially. And first of all, and I know all of you can see this right away, first of all, it's more visually appealing, it's more beautiful, but most importantly, it's much easier to digest the information for your students. So students are able to explore the information and the lesson, there's that interactivity, they have that active role, you know, they're able to explore and that makes the experience much more engaging for everybody. So we like to say uh, that with the static content, you would be potentially putting your students to sleep. And with the interactive content, you are engaging and communicating, really communicating with your students. So why are we still you know, knowing this now about Genially? Why, why would you still continue to use programs that are 20 years old or 30 years old like PowerPoint? You know, it's, it's time to move on to the next thing and start communicating better. The problem until now or the challenge until now was that creating this type of interactive content and materials was very expensive to develop or very difficult to develop. So you either had to be a programmer or you had to be a designer or you had to pay somebody to do it because it was so difficult. 
but with Genially, what, we, what we've done is to create a very powerful tool that is very easy to use for anybody. So anybody with basic computer skills can create this type of interactive materials, okay? And really in just a few clicks, no programming, no design skills, you can do this very easily. Um, uh, Genially, for, in case you don't know, Genially is free to use. It comes, it, 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 ha it has a premium version, but the free version is a very robust free version. So don't feel shy about recommending Genially because you get so much and you're gonna be able to do so much. I just wanted to say that. And one of the secrets about the ease of use of Genially are the templates. So once you go into Genially and register, you're gonna see it comes with hundreds of templates that are ready to use. Um, you know, we, we have a big design team. They're always adding fresh new templates. So you're never running out. Um, you know, people normally start like, you know, editing a template um, until you feel more comfortable and then, you know, continue to do more things. So we like to say we, we, you know, we brought the best of the design tools and the office tools together in Genially, making communication amazing. And now, you know, we've been talking about learning resources or presentations until now, but in this slide, you can see everything that you can create with Genially. So really you can use, it's very versatile. You can use it for pretty much anything that you think of. Um, you know, you would normally need five or six tools to create everything that you can do with Genially. Um, you know, with us, you only need the one tool. So the time you spend learning how to use Genially is worth, is really worthwhile, okay? So I'm gonna show you um, a few examples very quickly. I can drop the link to this presentation on the chat later so you can look through everything, you know. So this is, this is a template for a STEM interactive lesson. You know, you would just need to edit the information. So that's an example. Uh, you can do dossiers. So this one, for example, it's for a website of a school. So you can embed your Genially on the website and you can do like a, a microsite, you know? So these are things you can do with Genially. Gamification, uh, Maria and Julia are gonna show you a lot, but this is one of my favorite templates. So I'm just gonna let you take a peek at it because it's really, it's really cool, you know? I really want you to see all the fun stuff too. Um, and everything you can do. And I'm gonna show you one more thing and that is an infographic that is a choice boards. In the US choice boards are very popular right now and we're seeing a lot of teachers uh, here using Genially to create this type of interactive choice boards, you know, where the students have that, um, that choice, you know, that you, you get that personalization of activities, you know, so that's another use of Genially, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot personal branding, you can do an about me on the first day of the school uh, as a teacher, you can present yourself, you can have your students create one. So really there's so many ideas of things you can do. I could be here uh, for two days <laughs> showing you everything. So uh, those are just some ideas. And the secret of Genial is the interactivity. You're seeing how everything is interactive, the animations, the monitoring, you're able to see the performance of your lesson and integration. You can integrate anything you can think of within Genially, YouTube videos, this is a Twitter feed, you can do Google Maps, um, you know, you can bring anything into Genially and then you can put Genially into anything. So you can, with the link, you can integrate Genially into your LMS system that you use at the school or you can, you know, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, OneNote, just with the link, you're able to, to have your Genially display anywhere. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I know Marie is gonna speak about um, gamification. So I'm gonna leave that to, to her. And it really, once you register and you see, you're gonna see it is really so easy, that seems like magic. So I hope everybody get that sense on their first, experience with Genially, you know? And these are some of the colleges and universities. It Genially can be used at any level. So even if you teach kindergarten or if you're at, in K-12 or if you're at college level or corporate e-learning, like we have the whole ex spectrum um, of users, you know? It's education in, in all their forms and shapes, okay? And 
uh, 12 million users worldwide, so you won't be alone when, when you use Genially. There's a big community, there's Facebook groups, there's a, there's a great community on Twitter, on social media. So really, we really feel like family and we really are family to our users. So, so that, that's it. I hope you will join. I hope everybody enjoyed. And I'm going to hand it over back to, to Joe. And, and that's it. If there's any questions, I look through the chat now, but you can also use the hashtag as genially, okay, on Twitter and we will respond. Somebody from our team will respond. Okay, thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you so much, Conchi. That was fantastic. Uh, a really lovely overview there uh, of all the um, all the, the principles of behind Genially and some some really lovely ideas. I've also been very impressed by the chat. Uh, we have some very lovely, helpful people in the chat uh, who have been answering questions. Thank you ever so much. Um, all the attendees who have been posting questions. I think uh, apart from a couple of questions which I've got so uh, in the Google Doc here, all the other questions have been answered already, which is superb. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Marie, who I'm sure you're all, uh, you're, you're dying to see, I'm sure. She's like, the, she's like the headliner in lots of ways, or a double headliner, should I say, uh, in, this, uh, in this session. So over to you, uh, Marie, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this. If you introduce yourself to those people that don't know you, uh, yes. that'd be great. And, and please do mention the Facebook group um, yes. as well. Um, over to you, Marie, and thank you very much for doing this. Okay, hello everyone. I'm really excited to be presenting with Julia and Joe today. Uh, my name is Marie Aliro, and I'm head of French and deputy house mistress at Beats Prep School. This is a school in the southeast of England, in Eastbourne. Uh, I'm also a genially ambassador, and I'm part of the SCAPE team, and I'm also admin for the Facebook group Teaching with Genially. So I've put links on this page. We will share this presentation with you. I've put links on this page to the SCAPE website. So SCAPE is, um, is a group of teachers uh, interested in escape room, and they have created some extension for Genially. I will show you in a minute. Uh, on this page, you've got a link to the SCAPE website, a link to our Facebook group, and a link to my Padlet. On my Padlet, I share all my Genially creation, and uh, most of them are reusable, so you can reuse them if you want to. Uh, and I've got a link here, which we've already shared in the chat, to all the Scape extensions in English. Uh, Julia and I have been translating them into English, and we will show you how to use them today. So, uh, well, Conchi has got, already gone through all of that, what you can create with Genially, and we're going to concentrate on gamification tonight. So first, I want to tell you a little bit about the Scape team. So we are, I'm part of the SCAPE team. We are a group of teachers and it's based in, in, in France and um, all these teachers are interested in escape games. A few of the members are designing the extension for Genially. I don't do that with all coding. I can use them, but I don't know how to make them. Um, so there are quite a lot of different extensions. So the SCAPE extensions are, you can't find them within Genially. That's a question that a lot of people are asking us. Uh, where to find them. So you can find them on, um, on the SCAPE website. So I've put a link there. So on the SCAPE website, they are in French. So there's all these extensions. There's about 70 of them. Uh, but you can find them on the links we've shared in the chat with all the translation into English. So we've made these. Uh, Julian, I have made these. Um, Marie, sorry to interrupt, but could you move your microphone a little bit nearer to your mouth? Is that okay? Just because a couple of people have said that you're a little bit quiet compared to okay everyone. is that all right just a little the actual microphone itself is that is it possible to move it a little uh, bit or i've moved it now i can't move it any closer than that's that. fine that's fine don't that's worry better? yeah okay. that's fine yeah sorry thank you <laughs> okay right so um what i'm going to show you today is uh loads of different games that you can use with genially so in the lockdown um I used a lot the breakout rooms and I used a lot of the Genially board games templates uh, because uh, we wanted children to be able to work together and the, in the breakout room they were really ideal to use. So these are Genially templates, you've got Snake on Ladder, loads of templates, very easy to, uh, to edit. Uh, I've used them in breakout rooms, so you need one child to be in charge, share their screen and be in charge of the counters. If you are not teaching online, you can uh, maybe share a, um, a device to do the games. So all these games, uh, where all these templates are made uh, by Genially, so you can just edit them. 
uh, what I want to show you today is how to add a deck of card or a wheel of name to do the questions. So I've created my own templates as well. So all these games are my own templates and they're all available on my Padlet or on the Facebook group. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, example of games I designed. So this one was a bingo game. So I've done that in um, online teaching. So I was asking the children to choose six cards. That was about rooms in the house. So they were all choosing their cards, putting them on there. And then they could use the pen, which is a functionality in Genially, to tick them off if I was, uh, if I was uh, choosing their cards. So all the children were on this slide, and I was on this slide using a wheel of name. So the wheel of name. Select. I'll get to stop it. The music is very long, but I can just select um, um, a room, a room of the house. Okay. Uh, this one is a Tetris game that I've designed as well. I've used uh, with the dice and I've used a deck of cards. So if I click on there, it selects a card randomly. So that's what I'm going to show you in my next, in my next part, how to do a deck of cards or how to do um, a wheel of name. So the aim of this game, if you're the Pac-Man, you've got to collect all the cherries. If you're the little ghost, you've got to, uh, to catch the Pac-Man. Uh, I did a Tetris game. Again, I've used uh, a wheel of name. So all these games can be adapted for any, any topic. So that's all my little cards. So this is with escape extension called RND. And this is the wheel of name. Wheel of name is not part of escape. It's another website. Uh, I've done a blockbuster. So same again. This is with RND to choose your card. And this one is... Um, uh, pick put by escape. So you select your color and then you can put it on your, on there, like this. Uh, next game I've designed is a Connect Four, and this one is, uh, I think, has been quite popular with people. Uh, loads of people have been uh, um, using it. So again, I've put a deck of cards. And again, that's a pick put. And we're not showing the pick put today, but you can have a look on our extension and you can just put your colors there. And finally, the last game uh, I'm going to show you that I've designed is uh, my latest one. So it's uh, based on the, on the characters Among Us. So it's a board game and they've got to go around when they're on the skull, they can kill one of the characters from the other player. So, you can just drag this, and this, this part is made with DND by Scape, which I will show as well later. So, the first thing I'm going to show you tonight is how to do a deck of cards using RND from Scape. So, it makes a deck of cards, and then you can just select one random, randomly. So, on this presentation, I've also put a link to the Scape extension. We've shared that in the chat, but it's also on there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing I need to do is go on the Scape extension. I'm going to go to Menu, Scape Tools. So this one is called R&D. So they're all in alphabetical order. So I'm going to R&D. And I'm going to click Reuse. So on this template, you've got examples. Uh, these are examples Julia and I made or other people who have shared them with us and you've got the template. So you need to click reuse. So when you click reuse, this is going into your panel, into your Genially, Genially panel. So I'm going to show you that. So that's my Genially panel. I need to refresh it. And my R&D template is now here. So if you want to add it to your game, I'm going to add it. I'm on the wrong page. Okay, I'm going to add it to this Connect4 game. So I've reused my template, my Connect4, and I've got three different cards. Obviously, you need to make more cards, but I'm just going to do three, so it doesn't take me too long to show you. So I need to do Add Page, My Creation. So now this is going into my panel, so I'm going to find my R&D I've just saved. So R&D. And you always, the templates are always on a blue background. So I'm going to add that page. 
So these pages go after my page. So all the scape extension, they've got little codes that you need to group with some elements to make it work. This one is very easy to use. All you need is this element as R, this element suspense. So I'm going to copy them with control C. I'm going to go back to my first page and do control V. So now they are on my page. So that's my button. And that's my to, to do my cards at random. So I need three of these little hazards. So I'm just copying and pasting them. And I'm going to group these with the cards. So I need to put them at the back. So I'm just going to select them. I'm going to use this to put them at the back. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Right, I'm going to do it there. Okay, because it went behind my background. Okay, there we go. So each card, I'm going to group with one of these little hazards. So how old are you? That's my card. I'm going to group. So now this one is grouped. Okay, my second question. I'm going to put one element there. Just select and group. And my last one. Select them and group. So now I've got my three cards. I can select all of them together. And if I use this element, I can put them in a neat file and just put them there. So now if I do a preview, if I click on my button, that shows in my card um, randomly. So that's how to use R&D. Another good way to uh, do questions quickly is to use wheel of name. So wheel of name is to make a wheel like this and you can click on it and it just selects a question. So the link for the website is on the presentation as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So wheel of name, so I'm going to, I've prepared in advance my questions. So I'm going to, that was already made, but imagine I'm going to do new. I'm going to paste my questions. Okay, and then I can customize my wheel. So you can change the color. You can add an image if you want to. Usually I add my Bitmoji, so let's do that. Okay, so that's my wheel of name. So to put that onto my Genially, I need to do, oh, you can also, uh, you can also uh, change the music. There's lots of different things you can do, so you can explore that. So now to put it on my Genially, I click on Share, Continue, Continue, and I'm going to copy this link. So now when I've got this link, I need to use a website called iFrame Generator, and that's going to change that link into an iFrame, and you can insert uh, loads of different activities with iFrame on Genially. So I'm going to click on that. So all you need to do is put your link there, generate, and this is my iFrame. So I'm going to copy, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to do it on a different game. I'm going to do it on this one. Okay. Sorry, I've got my cameras in the way. Okay, so I've got my iframe, so I need to do insert, other, and now I'm going to paste my iframe, insert. If you do things like uh, learning apps, you can also uh, do the same way, inserting iframe. So then I can resize my wheel. And there you go, you've got your questions for your game. Um, we've had a question from the chat, uh, Marie. If it, I don't yes. know if it's possible to do this right now, but yes. uh, Adeline was wondering if you could maybe show us how to make one card from scratch. Is that yes, possible? of course. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so. Right, so if I go back to my page with the cards, I've got these cameras in the way. Oh, there we go. Okay. So to make a card, I would just use uh, resources. And I really like this one. So like this. And then I would add some text. So text, you write your question. And then all you need to do is 
group. Group your questions on your card. Is this answering your question? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Adeline, feel free to write in the chat <laughs> if that's answering your question. Um, we also had, um, you don't have to answer this right now, but um, we also had a question, how do you add the music to your slide with the Wheel of Names? Did you add music with Jean Lee is, tool? No, it is on Wheel of Names. Sorry, I should have showed that. So on my Wheel of Name, when I do customize, uh, there's after spin and then you can choose the sound. Oh no, that's just asking it. During spin is there, the music. So you can choose any music there. Perfect. That's lovely. Sorry, I should have showed that. That's <laughs> fine. You're doing, a, you're doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Okay. Right. Okay. So next thing I want to show you is not part of Scape. It's uh, from Sandbox Education. And I think Sandbox Education are watching us tonight. So I hope I'm going to do a good job. Uh, so they have created some templates of games, and I really like this one, which is a double game. I, it's very, very easy to, to, um, to do, so I wanted to show it to you. So I've used it in class, and I've asked students just to shout out the correct word. For example, je joue au volet, and then they just, uh, I was clicking on the picture. And the good thing about the Sandbox Education one is you can remove a picture, you can remove uh, two pictures for the next round. I have to find where it, there we go. You can remove two pictures. And also, uh, Sandbox Education have designed loads of new templates, but I haven't had time to play with all their new templates. So they've got things like uh, two players for, um, for double. So if I go on their website, so I've put the link on my presentation as well. And I've put the link straight to the double, but they've got other extension as well. And I haven't had much time yet to explore all of them. If you go on there, that's their template for um, double. So they've got loads of different uh, game modes, uh, different lives, uh, if it's dual, if it's individual. So this one, for example, is a dual. So you, you are two players. So if you're on this side and if you click there, you get, oh, I'm sorry, I'm showing you the wrong thing. So if I play, press play, if I'm on this side, I get a point. And then you can have a child playing on the other side. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to do this. Uh, my version is a simple version. So on my version, it's only, uh, it's only one player. But I just do it as a class. But they all work the same way to edit them. So it should be uh, quite easy if you want to do something different. So I'm going to go on my page. So that's my double. So I took the template from the Sandbox Education. So exactly like the Scape extension, you just reuse it. And this one is very, very easy. All you've got to do is change your pack of cards. So there's a pack of cards, there, a pack of pictures, sorry, just there. Okay, so that's all the pictures I've been using, all my sports picture. And I'm going to change them now to uh, food pictures. To do that, I usually do it on a new page. So if I go on a blank page, because it's easier to resize them. I'll show you why. So if I go to image, uh, so I've prepared my pictures in advance, picture for double. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to put all of them on my page. You need quite a few pictures to, to play this game though. There we go. So now I've got all of them. I'm selecting them. I'm going to make them smaller. And now uh, I'm just going to copy them with Control C. And I'm going to paste them on this slide. So what I need to do is use that uh, element. So I'm going to ungroup this and use that element to group it with my pictures. I'm just putting it there. I'm doing a preview, and now I've got all my food pictures instead of my sports pictures. So very, very easy to use. It takes two minutes to do it, and all their new modes look really amazing as well. So have a look at them. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is DND by Scape because it's such a versatile tool. You can do so many things with DND. Uh, I had a webinar yesterday showing some example of DND. So if you want to have a look at that. So you can do things like uh, labeling activity. So for example, l'arc de triomphe. 
le Sacré-Cœur, la Tour Eiffel, les égouts, les catacombes, le musée du Louvre, le centre Pompidou, and Notre Dame, and you get, I haven't done it properly, and you get a global feedback. So you get a feedback at the end. So that was part of an escape game. You can also do sorting activities. So for example, in French, sorting out uh, masculine animals, chat, chien, poisson, araignée, tortue, and souris goes there, and then you get feedback. So that was also part of an escape game. But you can also do a gap fill activity. Uh, J'ai acheté des souvenirs with a feedback straight away. J'ai envoyé, and then at the end you get a global feedback. So if I do this quickly, j'ai mangé, uh, j'ai passé, on peut prendre des photos, uh, regarder, visiter, and visiter goes there, and then you've got a global feedback. So again, this was part of an escape game, but it could be just an exercise, an activity. So I'm going to show you how to do D&D by showing you an example. So I've used some people from the MFL Twitter at the community to do this activity. So there's Natasha here who did uh, the first webinar with me. There's Adeline who's helping in the chat. And Esmeralda who's also helping in the chat and who's um, um, genially ambassador. Joe, and we've got La Joconde and Esther's just sitting there. So you've got feedback. Uh, individual feedback and then global feedback. Here there's a little video to show you how to do it. Uh, so if you want to watch it later, you can just watch this little video. But I'm going to show you now how to do this. So again, I need my escape template. So I'm going on my escape tools, escape extension. So remember, you can't find this on Genially. You need this link with all our translation to be able to use the escape extension. Uh, a lot of people are asking us, where do I find this on Genially? But it's not on Genially, it's, uh, it's an add-on to Genially. So if I go to Menu, Escape Tools, so this one is called DND. So I'm doing that. Uh, reuse. So now this is coming into my panel. So this is now in my panel. Okay, so if I go on my page, I've already prepared my name, add page, my creation. And it will be one of the first one because I've just saved it. So DND. And the, the template is always with a blue background. So I'm going to click there, add. So now I've got all my little codes. It looks quite difficult, but all you've got to do is copy and paste all these little codes according to what you want to do. So I'm going first to put my pictures. So I'm going to go to image. Just going to get rid of these quickly, otherwise they're going to be in the way. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to put all my pictures for this activity. Right, so I'm going to start with my background. So I've prepared all these pictures in advance. So my museum background, just going to put it on my slide and I'm going to put it in the back. I've already prepared my names in advance. so It doesn't take me too long tonight to show you. Then I'm going to put my frames. So I've got Natasha, Joe, La Joconde, Esmeralda and Adeline. And I will need uh, feedback. So I'm just going to do two of them. So if I do Joe and La Joconde, for example, and I will need a global feedback. So I'm going to put Esther on the bench there watching, and I'm going to be the global feedback. So to do that, I want to put Joe's name and uh, La Joconde, and I want, when I drag these names, I want uh, a feedback, a tick to come up, and then my global feedback when it's all done. So I need the function, which is this yellow element. I need object one, cible one, which means target in English, in French, on one, object two, target two, on two, 
and I need the global on to have the global feedback. You can do so many different things with, uh, this, uh, with this extension. So I'm going to paste that here. The function needs to be in your page somewhere. I need to make sure it's in your page. You won't see it when you preview the game. Global on is my global feedback. So that's my Bitmoji. So I'm going to group that together. So then I've got my two objects are my names and my targets are the frames. So if I do target two as La Joconde, I'm going to group this and the feedback, sorry, I'm, I, I need to do an order so you understand. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on the side because I'm in my way. Okay, so target one will be the frame with Joe. So my object one is the word La Joconde. So I'm grouping these. Object two is uh, Joe's name. I think, I think you've got it the wrong way around, Marie. No, I'm fine. The colors, I mean. Because oh, you've yes. got four Sorry. days now. Yeah, that. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're right. Thank you. I mean, they both have nice, lovely hair, but. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I was, yeah, I was going to do the wrong thing. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Okay. So I just had the wrong uh, name for the wrong uh, person because I just, yeah. So I'm just going to group this together. My feedback is my tick. So I'm just going to group that. And my feedback is going to be this. And I put them wherever I want them to appear. So I want it to appear here and I want it to appear here. These names, I need to make sure they are on the first layer. So I use this tool and I make sure they are draggable. So I can move them. So if I do a preview now, I can drag Joe's name on his frame and my tick is coming up, La Joconde on there and my global feedback is coming up. So this extension is amazing. You can do so many different things with it. Okay, thanks, Julia. Sorry about that. I'm glad you told me, <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so uh, Scape, I've made so many extensions. It's really difficult to know what they all are. So the best thing to do is if you've got an idea and you don't know which one to use, just ask us on our Facebook group. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult to remember what they're all doing because there's so many of them. Uh, I just want to show you uh, very quickly a little escape game I've made recently. So, sorry, Marie, before you do that, maybe you can mention that if you hover over the names of the extension, it gives you a little um, description yes. as well, which makes it easier to find. Yes, and actually that was a question in the Facebook group today, and I, di I did say that. If you hover, the, hover over the name, it tells you what it does, and then if you open them, we have put some examples as well. So I'm just going to show you some uh, uh, an escape game I've made, and I've used quite a lot of extension in this one, but I'm just going to show you uh, a really exciting new extension called Take It, and you can do you can collect objects in different slides to do uh, to use in another slide, so to do like an escape game. So, for example, there I've got a DND with a key opening the door. So I'm opening my door. Then I've got different rooms to go to. So if I go to my kitchen, uh, if I go to the fridge. So the aim of this game is to find the food for the pets. So this one is a twin activity. All you've got to do is match up the cards. So la salle à manger, le jardin, la chambre de mes parents, la cuisine, l'entrée, ma chambre, and the salon. And then you can open the fridge. And that's the one I want to show you. Oh, that was a bit slow, the thing. Uh, I can take the milk there, so it goes into my inventory, and then I can use that in another slide. So I can feed the cat here, give in the milk, and then something happens. So there are so many things you can do with Scape Extension. They are anything you want to do. Uh, you can ask as uh, you can also ask Scape to create some extension for you because they they are very happy to to create things. And I'm going now to pass over to Julia. Okay. Sorry. Awesome. Lee. Thank you so much, Marie. That's uh, well. I've, ju I've just literally put in the chat. I'm in awe of your skills. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think. Thank um, you. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. 
And I think everyone's been doing a great job in answering everyone's questions. Right. Um, I think if we point people towards, as has been done already, to um, uh, Marie and Julia's uh, Facebook group um, around Gene Lee, that you can put all your questions there as well. But thank you ever so much, everybody, answering the questions, Adeline and Anna, and so on and so forth. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so over to Julia now. Julia, if you could introduce yourself, if that's okay, and then um, show us the, uh, the presentation. Thank you again so much for agreeing to do this. And please mention your book as well. That'd be lovely. <laughs> I will, I will. Um, okay, let me quickly share and get this all set up. Um, let me just quickly hide all the things so they're not in my way. Okay, um, are you okay with seeing my presentation now? Yep, all good. Yes, all good. okay, good. Uh, I'm not going to show it in proper presentation mode because I'm going to go in and out, show things just like Marie did. So um, I'm just going to say in preview mode here. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a German teacher at Millfield School in Southwest England. Um, and just like Marie, I'm um, a Genie ambassador and I'm also admin in that Facebook group. And um, I've written this book called Escape Rooms in Education. And it also contains lots of Genially templates or links to Genially templates and gives you some ideas of uh, lots and lots of different games you can use for your escape rooms, either dig digital ones or physical ones as well for your classroom or a mix of the two. And it tells you how to kind of set it, the steps, uh, how to set it up. Okay, dokie, but um, let's get started. So I'm also going to show you a few more of the escape extensions and plus some other uh, just kind of game ideas without scape extension just by using animations and so on. Okay, so the first one I want to show, it's a really simple one, one but really versatile, I think. So this is made by scape and um, it only consists of these two boxes here. And the great thing is it allows you to take, um, it gets you the link for a specific Genially page, because normally if you share a link to a Genially presentation, it will always start from the first page. But sometimes you might want um, the players or the students to jump to a certain page because maybe they didn't finish the presentation in the last um, lesson and you don't want them to start from the beginning again. And also, if you've got the, the URL for the page, um, you can then add it to other games um, and for example, you could add uh, or you can embed a Google uh, form, which means that only if you fill in the Google form, you then get the link to go to the next page. OK, so I mean, this is kind of a, a beginner one, but just in case people don't realize you can change the, the navigation. Um, so at the moment it's on standard, which means you can just skip to the next page. But if you change it to microsite, it means I can only get to the next slide if I've got either some link built into the page or if I've got the, the address of that page. So obviously if you're doing like an escape room, then you want to use the microsite. So they have to do the task before they get on. Okay, so how um, the page reference tool works is really easy. You just take this, either the red box uh, to get the address or the green box if you want the embed code and you just copy it and then paste it on any other slides. Let's use this example page here. So I put it in here. And then the important bit is you need to go into preview mode. And now you can copy this address. So if I just do control C and copy it. And now if I go into my browser and paste this in, you will see um, it will take me hopefully straight to this page with the door. Okay, so I don't have to go through the whole presentation, which is great. And well, it showed me the box because I can just delete the box. So once you've copied the link, just get rid of it because you don't need it anymore. Okay. And with the embed code, it means that you can embed one genially into another one if you want to, um, to make it. Yeah. Okay. And then another place where you can use this is in Locky. So Locky is another French website, so they're not, not by Scape, but also super useful. If you haven't come across them, I would definitely recommend you uh, check it out. And as the name says, they offer lots and lots of different locks. So you can see down here a few examples of the types of locks you can get, and you can then embed them into your Genie presentation or in anything else. I mean, if you have, I don't know, um, a Google, Google presentation or whatever, you could use it in there as well. 
So I'm going to show you quickly the website here. So Loki, um, the, at the moment it's in French, but if you scroll down, and it took me a while to find this out, down here you see it has French, English, and Spanish. So they are the only three languages at the moment. So I want to change it to English because then it also changes the kind of the text that comes with the locks. Okay, so let's say I want to create a new lock. I just give it a name um, because the name is only for the for the person who creates it. So the players won't see it. Uh, and it's maybe important to mention that you have a limit of 30 locks at the beginning anyway. Um, and if you want to create more, then you need to send them an email and they will give you more. But I guess they just don't want people to clutter up with their website with locks they're not using anymore. Um, and the person who's creating it does need an account, but the players don't need an account. Okay, so let's go here. Let's make our test log. And um, here are all the different locks you can have. And they're really cool ones, like the musical one, where you have to play different notes on a piano. Um, I really like the color one. Here, let's do colors. So um, I can choose my pattern now. And you can see here, it, it becomes important that I've changed it to English because then it has the, the labels. But I mean, you can see the colors anyway. So it doesn't make so much difference. Okay, let's just go with red, orange, yellow as my code. Um, but I could add lots more, so I can have a really long code if I wanted to. But I'll just do a quick one. And now I can choose what reward the players would get if they put the right lock, uh, the right code in. So they could get just a well done text, they could get an image, and so on. They can get a website, and this is now where, for example, I could put in the link I got from the page reference tool earlier. So that means they can only get to that slide with the door um, if they open that lock, which actually doesn't make so much sense because that's going to be the page where I put the lock, but never mind. Uh, so normally you would obviously take the next one. Okay, so, and now I've got the iframe code here. Um, a nice trick is you can do a transparent background. So let's copy this iframe code. And then um, very similar to what Marie showed earlier, you go to insert and other. So she used it for a wheel of names, but you can use it for Loki as well. So in other, you paste in that iframe code. And now I've got this. Well, let's maybe put it here and then it should take us to the other page. So if I go into preview mode now, and obviously normally I wouldn't have these arrows at the side. So I couldn't get away from this page if I was a player. So I wouldn't need to find out the code is red or yellow. Then I click OK. And in this case, it has embedded that page there. But you can also do it that it um, opens up as a whole new window as well or, and replaces the one that you're on, which would make more sense in this case. Um, but yeah, there are lots of different, oops, lots of different great locks you can have. And with the, um, with the transparent background, so uh, actually it would make more sense here. Oops, sorry. This is where I meant to put it. Um, then it actually fits into your page quite nicely as well. So you can kind of um, connect it better with your stories. In this case, you can kind of imagine that this no door needs a, a lock there. Okay, then the main one I want to show today is called quiz. So it's kind of a funny way of saying quiz because that's what it is. It allows you to add quiz boxes or question boxes to your Genially, okay? And you can have lots and lots on one page, as many as you want, and they can have all kinds of, of answers. They need to be text answers, but they can be numbers or any language of C that you want. And again, this is a scape tool, so you will need the template. Um, some of the templates are in this presentation that I'm showing at the moment, um, but the other ones, um, as Marie said, are in that big presentation we have made with all the translations. Okay, I'll show you what quiz looks like. So here is my first example. And here is kind of a fake uh, username and password required by this computer. At the moment it says question one and question two, but this is only because I'm in preview mode. So if I was in proper presentation mode, uh, the box would just be empty. Okay, so here my username, I know that it's escape. And my password is one, two, three. Actually, let's do a wrong one first and check. Okay, so it's giving me the feedback here. 
And also you can see the attempt has gone up by one. And that save over here is still there. So I haven't managed to open it. But if I put in the correct code here, check. Okay, so now I've managed to get into the SCAPE website there and the save has disappeared. So I can now go to next page. So if this was the link to the next page, okay. Here's another example. So this is just a really simple kind of quiz. Um, so you could just use it to test your students. Um, so let's do this. And in this case, if I put the wrong answer, I'll show you what happens then. So you can um, change lots of, lots of the options, which I'll show in a minute. So in this case, I've switched it on that it shows me the correct ones as green and the incorrect ones as red. So this is quite handy if you've got a lot of questions and you want to kind of help you, your players a little bit to find out where they've made a mistake. Okay, here's my third example. So the question is on the picture there are and a, mm. so obviously it's a cat and a dog, but which way around? Well, the good news is it doesn't matter. So if I could put a uh, cat and dog, it works and I get my thumbs up. Let's put something wrong. No, mouse, definitely not, so that's wrong. But if I put it the other way around, so I put dog and cat, now I check and yay, I got it right. So you, there are quite a lot of different options you can do. And I've got the example code at the bottom, which looks very complicated, but actually it's not as bad as it looks because I'll show you how to do it. So by the way, if you're looking at scape uh, templates, they often look like this, namely, you can't see anything. That's because you can only see them in edit mode. Okay, so if you get to an empty page, that's probably because something isn't grouped properly. So that's also a good trick for um, troubleshooting. When you're trying to use the, the escape templates and you go into preview and your slide is completely empty and it, like nothing would be on there, even items that haven't got anything to do with the with the extension will be invisible. In that case, it's normally that you're either missing the code box, which most of the scape extensions need that little code box, which just needs to be somewhere on the page. It doesn't even need to be grouped with anything. Or you've got an element and you forgot to group it. So for example, if I put this arrow box on my page, but don't group it with a picture, then the whole page will be empty. So these are the two things to look out for. Do you need a code box and is everything grouped? Okay, good. So um, if I want to make an example, so as you can see, you've got all these different elements. So I'm just taking the top four. So they are the ones I need. Uh, the other two are optional. I'll, I'll come to them in a minute. Okay, so as I said, the black thing would just be invisible, so I'll just leave it somewhere, but it normally needs to be within the slide. So sometimes it doesn't work if it's out there, so make sure it's inside the slide. Now I've got my uh, text box. In the full version of this template, there are also options to change the color and the size and so on of that question box, but I'm just going with the standard one here. And then I've got my arrow box. So this is what will come up if I get it wrong. So I want to group it with my thumb down. So I just click on the thumb, I click, and then I hold down um, shift, and then I can click on the other box, and then I can group it, or I can go to control G and group it as even quicker. So I do the same over here. I group these two together. Uh, is it doing it? There we go. And this is just my question. And one of the mistakes I made at the beginning was that I had a, a question and the text box was really big so that it was on top of the this question box here. And then you can't write into it. So make sure that the text box here is not overlapping the answer box, okay? Okay, now, the, the code is actually hidden in this checkbox. So this is where you need to change things. So in here, I go into the interactivity um, section and then there's the code view. So that's where you need to look. And now suddenly you see, ooh, this is where all the magic happens here. And there's a really long code. 
but the only part that you are interested in is the top one here uh, between those dotted lines. And the only thing you need to change really are the ans answers here in the um, square brackets. And it's really important that you've got the same number of answers in there as you have quiz boxes on your page, because otherwise it just will be a blank page when you try it out. In this case, I've only got one box and um, I want my answer to be A, but maybe the students are going to write it as a word. So I also want them want to allow them to do that. So I can put a straight line like this and then I can put A. So now it will allow it either as a number or as a word. And I could even add more alternatives to it, which is great. If I had two text boxes or 20 text boxes, then I just need to do a comma, quotation mark, and then whatever my answer is, and another quotation mark. So just make sure that you don't have any extra spaces and so on, and that all your punctuation is correct there. Otherwise, it doesn't quite work. Okay, and then I've got lots of different options here, and it tells you what each one does. So just change this zero at the front there. If, for example, if you want to, um, if the order of answers is important. So if you've got 10 math questions, and obviously it is important because the number need to be in the right box. Um, then the next one is if it will ignore um, extra spaces, which is really great because when students are writing on phones, it often automatically adds an extra space after the word and which then sometimes makes it wrong. But actually with this, as long as it says zero, it doesn't matter. And then you can also decide if the case is relevant, if you want to see the arrows that it come up as red. And then the bottom three are for showing the attempts. And you can even lock it that after three attempts, they can't try again if you want to be really mean. Okay, so you change all these to zeros or ones as you want. And now um, it should work. Let's try it out. I've grouped everything correctly. Yeah, okay, so I should be able to write an eight. And now it gives me a thumbs up. Okay, let's say I don't like this checkbox here. Okay, you do not delete it, obviously, because it has the code in it. And also don't ungroup it because that also uh, gets rid of the code. You can change the color of it. OK, so and you can change the writing on it as well. So let's say I wanted it in German. I could do that. But if your writing is too long, it messes it up. So if if you want to change it completely, so let's say instead of the checkbox, I just want the symbol here. The trick is to just put the checkbox in the top layer. I put it on top of my checkbox and then I go to transparency and make it invisible. And now the players don't even know it's there, but they're still clicking on it basically by mistake because they want to click on that check. But actually, in reality, they're clicking on on the hidden away checkbox. OK, so this is a nice way of doing it. Um, yeah, of changing the design. Okay, um, are there any questions about this part? Uh, we had one question, which I think has been answered anyway, but I'll just, I'll read it out now, if that's okay. So um, the question was, how do you insert the elements of uh, Coes is it inside a page on Genely? Um, well, you need to have the template. Right. And then you, um, as Marie showed earlier, you go to add page to my creations, then find this, this, um, so um, in this case, so it's called quiz. So I would go in here and I've got it saved in there, um, in theory. And so I can then choose it from there and then add that blue page here. That's the one I need. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah. And we had another and, question. And all the, oh, yeah. Uh, so all these uh, extensions we're showing, they are not in the paid version. So you don't need to pay. I mean, obviously pay because Genie is a great tool, but you don't actually have to. OK, so there are some some things that are quite useful, like you get more templates and so on when you have a um, educational account or a pro account. But the scape templates 
are independent because they're not made by genially they're made by the escape team so you can get them for free awesome and then we've got one other question uh from Sirkan, which is is genially vector-based design like illustrator or in design do you know i i don't think so it's more like powerpoint really okay so i I mean, I've made recently, I got myself Adobe Illustrator to change my pictures. Um, so all the vector picture work I did in Adobe Illustrator uh, and not a Genially. Fantastic. And and we had an earlier question. Do you think that Genially is a bit like VBA in PowerPoint, which is a term I've not heard for years? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Okay, no problem. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so I think that's everything we've got so far question wise, but please in the in the chat, do uh, keep your questions coming. And we'll put them to Marie and to uh, Julia and Marie's doing a great job in the chat answering questions as well. You're both, you're both amazing. I'm in awe of you. <laughs> Over to you, uh, Julia. Okay, so I just quickly uh, want to say about the last two items down here, which I forgot to mention. So they are optional. And we've got the, the mask, which is the one I used to make things disappear um, when the answer's right. So in this case here, at the beginning, I wanted the safe to disappear and reveal the arrow there. And um, the other one, this purple element with the red writing is the counter. So this shows you how many attempts you have made. So if I go to the first page here, um, it's, it's on here and I've just written the word attempts next to it. If you want to change the size and the color of the numbers, you can just change the color here. So if I go to yellow, um, now my my number, my zero here is yellow. Okay. Um, but yeah, you don't have to have it in there. And actually what you can't see at the moment is there's actually a secret layer there. So if I turn that back on again. So this is the picture that appeared when the correct code is entered. So it looks as if I, I have logged into the website, but actually it's just an extra pic picture there. Okay, um, now I want to talk about uh, Google Maps and um, embedding Google Maps in Genially. And so I'm a language teacher. So obviously for me, that's a great way of getting the students to kind of explore the, the country or the towns that we're talking about, especially now where we can't do any exchanges. So here, for example, uh, this is from my uh, escape room where you explain, uh, explore Spain. And you can actually walk around here in Madrid and it works just like Google Street View, as you can see. So you can even move around and you can basically do like a virtual treasure hunt because in this case here, yeah, the question is how many lines are there? So the players actually have to walk all the way around the statue to see the, um, the lines from all directions and count them, which is great. And over here, that question box obviously is just a, a quiz question box that's been combined with this. Okay, so if you want to insert um, Google Maps, you just go to Google Maps, so the normal um, google.com maps, um, and I've already chosen here that I want to go to Berlin because that's where I come from. And I've chosen the uh, television tower in the center. And now uh, most of you probably know Google Street View. So if you take that little man in the corner there, it will show you where you can go. So the blue lines means these are whole streets that have been photographed where you can actually walk up and down. The dots, they're often kind of better quality pictures, but they're just a a photo and you can't move around in them. So in this case, I want them to, let's say, walk down the street to have it a bit more interactive. Ah, oh, it's making me homesick. Ah, oh. okay. And so if I want this view, I go over here to the three dots next to the name and I go to share and embed and I go to embed a map and I just need to copy that link at the top there. There we go. Now I go back to my, my Genially. So here's my empty page. And again, I go to insert other, get rid of the Loki example and put in my, um, my Google one instead. And there we are, that's it. So now um, I've got that picture. And if I go into preview mode, 
it's now also interactive, so I can turn around, I can walk up and down the road and so on, which is great. Um, but you can't have the questions in the in the frame, so you, you have the uh, questions over there. I mean, Scape has just published a new um, extension was called Panoramics, where you can have kind of links in a 360 degree picture, but you, you can't really use Google Street View. You have to have an actual like long picture for that to work really. Okay, then um, are there any questions about this one? Uh, we just had one question uh, from Andrew about uh, on uh, Kuis, what is the mask box for? Do you know? Oh uh, yeah, so the mask uh, box is something that disappears when the answer is correct. Okay, fantastic. I absolutely love this, uh, the Google Maps uh, mm. integration. It reminds me of the work of uh, Vincent Everett, who has done Street View mm. Mysteries mm. and combined the audio from Quicker. But presumably you could do the same thing here. You could combine an audio player, couldn't mm. you, within Genially? Yeah. No, it's amazing. It's very cool. Okay, so now I get to timers. And I think timers are really important. And there are two different ways that I use them. So either to add speed questions, so to, to make kind of multiple choice questions a bit more exciting, or as a time out page. Because in lots of multiple choice questions, especially if you only got maybe three possible answers, it's often quicker to just try them all out than to actually think about the answer or maybe research the answer. So especially if you have got uh, students playing in competition and they want to be the first one to finish the game, then obviously they will do the quickest way and not take their time to actually do the math task or whatever you want them to do. So that's why I think it's important to add a timeout page if they do a wrong guess. Um, so they have to wait maybe five or 10 seconds before they can guess again. So I'll show you an example in a minute. So this is the speed quiz first. So here we go, we've got our question and I was too slow, I didn't answer in time. So now it's all covered up and I can't answer anymore, but I could click on the button here to go back and try again. So it would just take me to the previous page and then I have to go here again. And this is not an extension by Scape, but this is literally just made with animations within Genially, and I'll show in a minute how it works. So here's the other use of, of timers. So let's say I can't be bothered to look up how many shells there are, and I definitely don't want to do the math down there, so I just click a random number. Oh no, but now I have to wait five seconds before I can try again. So it's giving me a little countdown, and then I can go back to do the task again. And even 10 seconds can feel really long if you're waiting to go back to a, a slide. And I mean, you don't really need to have an animation. Um, you could just write there, you have to wait 10 seconds now, and then this arrow flies in with animation. Um, or, but I think with the, with the animation, it, it, well, it's a bit more clear that they are actually waiting for something to happen. I think otherwise they might be like, oh, what do I do now? I'm stuck on this page and I don't know why they can't go back. Okay, so um, here you can see how I've added this animation um, with the timer. So if I go into preview mode, you can see it's better. So you can see it's actually different numbers that just appear and disappear. And when they're all disappeared, then the animation for this one comes up. So if I go on to my five, for example, here, you go to the animation button and the five is there at the beginning because that's the first number I want to see. So I just want it to disappear after one second and it just fades out. And then the four, I want to appear after one second, namely after the five has disappeared, then I want the four to appear and then disappear after two seconds. So they kind of all take turns. And then the last one obviously will appear after four seconds and disappear after five seconds. And after that, I then want this arrow to appear, which has the link to the previous page. And the, the cogwheel, really all I did was add a continuous animation to it that is rotate right, which just makes it turn. So you can have lots of different ones. Um, 
And it took me a while to actually discover the continuous animations, but they're actually quite uh, quite fun sometimes to um, make your, your page just look a bit more animated. <laughs> okay. And surprise, surprise, there's also escape extension for this. So there is also Kronos. So here's my template for that. And that's the, um, I don't think I've showed this yet. So this is what it looks like. Here we go. So it has this nice countdown timer. And after the time is up, then my button appears here. And my extra tip is to use the go back um, link. So what I mean by that is if I click on here, I click on the link button. And then at the top, you've got all these options here. So um, because if you say previous page, it always takes you to, to the page that's in front of the one that you're on. But if you use the go back button, it always takes you to the page where you were before, which means that if I have um, a link, for example, here from slide 15, that takes me to slide 18, and then I add a link to go back, it will not take me to slide 17, but it would take me back to where I came from, namely slide 15. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. And this actually makes it much more easier to put um, one of those timeout um, slides in. Because if you've got, a, let's say, a multiple choice quiz with 10 different questions, you only need to make one of these kind of punishment pages um, and put it somewhere at the end of your, your 10 questions, and then add the go back button. So that means that if the players go wrong after page three or after question three, and they land here, then they click go back, they go back to question three and they don't have to start all the way from the beginning from uh, number one again, which can be very frustrating because if they get all the way to, I don't know, question 10 and then get it wrong and have to do it all again, that would be really annoying. So that's a, li a little trick to use, go back. Um, so it takes them back to where they, where they got wrong. Okay, and then, so the, the Kronos extension, um, so there are lots of different um, versions of it here. If I show in preview mode, you can see how they work. So you can display the real time. So for me, it's a uh, quarter past nine now. And it can also have a timer that goes over several slides. So you could start this on the very first slide of your escape room, and it would keep track of how many minutes it took them to escape. And you can have a countdown timer. So down here, this one was on, on 60 seconds. And if I get this wrong, uh, something will appear. So let's say I want um, a five second timer. So what I need is I want the on button because I want something to appear um, after the time. And I use the bottom yellow box here. Um, so you need one of those two boxes with the smaller numbers. The top one will only work once basically. And the second one will work Every time you get onto the page, it will start again from, from the beginning to count. And I also need the top one, which shows me the numbers. I copy all these over. I put them on here. And this one already has a little explosion, but I want to put my own explosion. So let's get rid of this one. So you just need that little green button and you group it. In this case, I've got a little GIF or GIF or whatever it's called that I want to appear. Um, down here is where I put the time, and I just want three seconds in this case. And let's try it out. So now we've got the countdown, and on zero, my explosion happens. Okay. And if I wanted to change the color or the size or the, the font, then I just change this one over here, and um, my numbers will have that, that font then. Oh, a bit too slow now. Um, never mind. Okay, another nice thing is to use different uh, GIFs as kind of your countdown, uh, because again, it it gives some kind of indication of how long students have to wait or the players have to wait, um, and just makes it clear to them that something is happening and 
and it's not just a, a broken link or something. So you could add the discount on GIF. So I've just literally just put in countdown in the, um, so if you go to images and down here, we've got our Jiffy. So if I put in countdown or timer, then you should get lots of different ones that you could use uh, depending how long your time is. And then you could just add um, kind of a back button like I've done here with this yellow one, which appears after whatever, five or 10 seconds. Okay, are there any uh, questions about timers? Not about timers, but um, we've got one question from Jenny, which is for the add-on scape tool, is it possible to, hang on, hang on, the, the chat's moving, hang, hang on, I've got it in my Google <laughs> Doc, hang on two seconds, right. For the add-on scape tool, is it possible to group it with audio within Genially? I only got it to work with a link. Um, well, it, does she mean Kronos or add-on? There, there is an extra extension which is called add-on, which should add sound. But to be honest, I haven't got yeah. around to trying that one out. But Yeah, that's what we're saying. It's, it's uh, the ex new extension, add-on. Mm. Uh, I said if she asks in our Facebook group, we can ask somebody from Skate mm. to answer that question, because cool. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I haven't really So that's it yet. cutting edge. That's really cutting yes. edge stuff, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> cool. In theory, yeah. Well, it does, um, because I had exactly the same question earlier by someone, and it does say it should work with most of the other extensions like D&D, &D, that if you uh, match things up correctly, then a sound should happen. But yeah, I haven't tried it out yet. Cool. Okay, so um do we still have time should i have to keep going yeah yeah we still got yes, time we, good, we still good, got good. we've got 13 minutes and then wrapping oh, up okay. and everything so, so another five ten minutes would be lovely yeah, if that's okay that's fine um so i've got uh, three more ideas on how to make kind of multiple choice questions a little bit more fun so the first one is this one so here what's the capital of germany well we all know we've just been there to the television tower so let's go start and now my answers come falling in. Oh, but I didn't read quick enough. So let's go to missed it. And then I have to start again. And then they come falling back in again. Hmm, which one was it? Hmm, okay, I think it was A. And then I can click on the right letter here and it will then take me to the next answer. Or it will take me to my timeout slide if I got it wrong. So this is a really easy trick if you know how to do it. Namely, if I zoom out here, you can see that the answers are just down there, so outside the slide. And all I've done is add a falling uh, so entrance and then slide. And you can see it makes them slide across the page there. Um, lots of people might notice from PowerPoint as well that you can have things sliding in. And um, I've changed them so that each one slides in at a slightly different time, um, just so they are not all kind of in the same line, because I think it makes it a bit easier to read <clears throat> um, if you've got a bit more time for the last one. So the last one falls in a bit, bit slower. And uh, what is important really for this to work is to have two slides that are identical. Um, so one just has the start button on it, and then the other one has the falling answers and the multiple choice answers, because this allows you to have this missed it button, which just has a link to the first one. So you can't really restart a slide, or at least I, I don't know how, if anyone knows, tell me. Um, so to restart the whole falling animation, you would have to go back and then um, do the two slides again, basically. Okay, here's another little one that just uses the, the drag ability. So when you do escape rooms, it is important to distinguish, I think, between tasks and puzzles. So tasks are, um, what, are tasks where you know exactly what you need to do. It just takes you a while. So for example, if you give the players a jigsaw puzzle, then that's the task because they know what a jigsaw puzzle is. It will just take them a while to put it together or if they have a, like a maze or word search or something. A puzzle on the other hand is one where you don't really know at the beginning 
what the actual task is. And it might take you a while to figure that out. So in this case, I would say this is more of a puzzle because all they get here is this clue, which is if good is 59, what is useless? So at first that doesn't really make sense. So I have to figure out that I have to find the word good, which in German is gut, and I have to put it next to the number 59. So just slide this up and down here. So gut is 59. Then what is useless? So useless in German is nutzlos. So they get the first answer is 23. And then they have to move it around again to find great, which is toll, and put it next to 83, so down here, and so on. And then this way, they will get three different numbers, which they can then put into a lock or password or whatever. So what I've done here is really just grouped this kind of battery thing with the text box. And then if you click up the, on the object, you can turn on the drag mode, which means that you can move that object. So on this slide, nothing else is draggable. Yeah, so I can't move any of these things, but I can drag around the battery. So it's really useful. And it has recently changed. So there has been updates. So if you haven't used um, Genially for a few weeks, then this might be a new thing for you because it used to be in the settings. But now all you need to do is this little hand here at the top. And you can even highlight the whole page. So if I wanted everything to be draggable, I could just turn it on for all of it together. But I don't in this case. Um, and obviously you could also turn this into a kind of Caesar wheel where you have the alphabet down there and then the alphabet again here. And you could say something like um, A equals F and then have a cryptic message where they would have to work out, oh, if A is F, then B is G and so on. And this way they can, they can work out what the message says. Okay, if you're using this template, um, then I would strongly recommend that you change the questions and the answers at the same time. So here it says, if question one is 59, so change question one to wherever you want, like the language or subject that you need, and then do A1 to the answer, and then move on to question two, because otherwise you don't know which one goes with which, and you will have to try it all out yourself. Uh, but if you use this template um, and stick to the numbering, then you will know what the answers are, which obviously you delete before you give it to the players. Okay, and here is the uh, third little um, game for kind of multiple choice. In this case, it's picture-based. So it's mirror, mirror on the wall. And if you go over it with your mouse or with your finger on an iPad, then you can see there is a picture behind there. So we've got little. And so the students need to work out, mm, that's a supermarket. So they have to click on there to get to the next page. I mean, you could also obviously have words in there, but it looks especially nice with, um, with pictures, I think. And really all it is, is the pictures under there. Yeah, and I've put these white boxes, oops, white boxes in front. And I've added an animation, which over here is hover mouse. So that's a really nice thing to discover as well. And it then says hide. And that means when I go over it with my how, how, um, mouse, it will hide. And there are lots of other ones as well you can do. Um, so have a little play with that. But uh, I have to say, if you if you think your players will be on mobile devices, be a bit careful with the hover mouse thing, because um, if your object also has um, a link to it, then it's difficult to have both the animation and the link working, because obviously on an on a iPad, for example, you can't really hover your finger because it wouldn't know that it's there. So it can be either an animation or a link, not really both of them, or it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't always work. So just try it out on a mobile device as well, I would say. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because I haven't got any links in my white boxes. The links are actually on the words here, as you can see. And I've just put um, an invisible um, area there, which um, is link, has the link in it. 
well, not in this case, but in the, in the actual game. Okay, good. I think I'm finished now. Um, are there any questions about these ones? I think we've covered all the questions. If there were any questions that we've had, people in the chat very kindly answered them. Um, so I think we're we're all good. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. That was brilliant. I mean, I just quickly mentioned this. I mean, yeah, Marie yeah. has already mentioned um, that there's this really new um, extension called Take It. And together with D&D, you can do it like in Marie's a pet game that you can collect items in your inventory and then use them on a different slide, which is really, really cool and makes it much more like a kind of classical point and click adventure game. So it's definitely one to check out and you can yeah, find it in our, our template as well. Superb. Yeah. Right. I would love to ask Marie to turn on your webcam, if that's okay, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, Thank you so much, uh, both of you. It's been amazing. Um, the chat has also been really, really rich. Um, so if anyone doesn't know how to do this, if you want to save the chat, just click on the three dots bottom right of the chat and click save chat and you'll be able to save it from there. Um, what would be amazing if it's possible to do a summary of the chat as in the main, you know, the questions and the answers for the Facebook group, uh, Marie and Julia, if you don't mind, if there's if there's yeah. time to do that, I think that'll be really really useful and rich. And what I've loved about this is um, the way it's really it really has moved on from the first part, and it's really been you know some really cutting edge ideas, as in the latest um, escape tools that have just come out and what have you. So it's been fantastic. You'll see from the chat right now, people are saying so many lovely things. In mm -hmm. fact, there was an amazing tweet uh, I saw uh, just earlier saying. There we are from from Widdy Del Carmen. Uh, mind blowing webinar. The material shared is absolutely oh. amazing. Thank you, Mary uh, and uh, Julia. So, oh. well done, everybody. It's been superb. Thank you. And um, yeah, just well, I don't know. If, I don't know if we have enough for part three, but I think it'll be <laughs> that'll be maybe 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 in a few months' time we could think about uh, something like that. But um, I would I'd like to thank Conchi as well. I know Conchi's had to leave us, but um, it's been a real team effort. And thank you to all the the digital bouncers, you know who you are in the background, helping <laughs> out as well. And for all of you coming along, it's been a really, really amazing event. Um, and we still got 142 people watching live wow. right now. So it just shows how much interest there is. So thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to stop recording now. And uh, it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs>